Hello, and welcome to Apex Instant Tips, episode number 108, brought to you every Friday at 12.05 Eastern Time. I'm Anton. We have with us today Hayden. Welcome, Hayden. Uh, happy Friday, Anton. Good to be here. Thanks. Uh, so we, um, we went through a few SQL CL um, tips a couple weeks ago, and we teased the idea that built into SQL CL uh, for everyone to use is Liquibase. Um, but we didn't right. really talk much about it. Uh, we may do more than one tip on um, Liquibase, but today is just a quick tip on a method for deploying. So, so we're not going to cover all of Liquibase in five minutes. I will do my best. Uh, but the, <laughs> uh, so much of um, how you deploy in Liquibase, it comes down to a question of taste and style. And uh, so just caveating everything I'm sharing today is something that makes sense to me. And, yeah, and it may or may not make sense to you. I'll say I've watched, I've watched a number of Liquibase presentations. I've played with it ever so slightly. And I, and I, I have to admit, I didn't find it highly approachable um, because I'm really used to working, you know, with just with my create table scripts, my alter table scripts, and, and I'm, I'm comfortable in that. Um, and one of the challenges is to, to get somebody old school like me to at least start with Liquibase. And I think uh, today's episode kind of gets us there. Yeah, let's, uh, let's see what other people think. So um, why don't we go ahead and share my screen? Very good. So I've got uh, two um, terminals here. Um, uh, what do you think they are, Anton? So on the left, I'm guessing it's your dev environment and on the right, it's your, your test environment. Yeah, so org schema, desk schema. So uh, let's just, uh, uh, I'll go ahead and kick off this timer and we're off to the races. So in my origin schema, I have uh, a number of tables. Uh, all the database change log tables are the default named uh, liquid based tables and key, I have um, my departments table, which I'm looking to deploy. I'm also in an empty folder. Um, on my right hand side, I am, uh, in my destination schema, and I only have one liquid-based related table, and I'm in that same MP folder. Uh, so there's a cool utility that um, liquid-based makes available to us that allows us to just get started. So if I run the lbges command, that will fill my empty folder with the files and configuration necessary to deploy my department's table. And so lb is sort of the SQL CL shortcut to getting to liquid-based, and then all the rest of it is straight liquid base commands. That's right, you're welcome to type out liquid base and that will also work, but I prefer LB. I, I have a, a, a small issue with this uh, default um, uh, technique. So, so now we can see in this, uh, in this uh, folder, there's now a controller.xml and a table folder. Let's take a look at that. Uh, the issue is that um, it's going to uh, propose to deploy an XML file. Um, and uh, I think this is unreadable. So I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to instead work with the SQL file that it created for me by default. And I'm going to direct my controller.xml to point at that. And Hayden, this is nice of you because I know that you actually very well know how to read XML. But um, for my benefit, I definitely appreciate um, uh, you know, being able to just look at the create tables, table statement like I've always done. That's right. And I'm going to. Mod I'm going to do some modest formatting here to, to make this ready for deployment. So I, I took out the, uh, the schema prefix, and I'm going to give this a change set that will show up in my uh, uh, database change log table. So, so these, key, these are and... key. The, the liquid-based comments at the beginning of your script or throughout your script are really the key elements. You could run this script through SQL, SQL CL, but it's, it's those comments that, that liquid-based is looking for. That's right. So... In my destination schema, I just uh, deployed um, the, uh, the the controller file as it was, and now we can see that I now have a department table there. So and that LB8 is what deployed uh, the, the the table. Okay. Correct. And, and I, when I consult my database change log, I can see that it executed my department's table script. I'm going to call out another alias. Looks like you've got a select star from database change log as a an alias. Am I right? That is correct. So. Deploying at first blush is the simple part. Where it gets complicated and where I think switching to SQL from XML makes even more sense is when it comes to making changes. So let's say that I want to alter my um, table uh, in my origin schema. So I'm going to add a created on 
column and I want to deploy that. So uh, back in my SQL file, I can add this statement and I need to make some uh, modest changes here. So I'm going to um, uh, run, I'm going to add run on change to true uh, because by default it won't rerun files. Um, and I'm going to add a precondition here to make sure that it's not going to run this portion of the script uh, if uh, the table departments already exists. And I'm going to add another change set here to describe my column. And so now when I run this, uh, it's going to uh, review uh, this portion. It's going to um, uh, uh, it's going to establish that this department table already exists, and so it's going to um, skip past it, and then it's only going to run this portion. So that works successfully. If I now describe my departments table in my destination schema, I can see there's now a created on column. And if I um, consult my database change log, I can see that it reran the departments table script, but the precondition prevented it from erroring. And it is going to create a, a and executed the created on portion. So, and if you were to run this again, that exact same command, it wouldn't fail. It would just do nothing. Is that right? Uh, precisely right. So the way it works is it consults uh, this database change log table for what scripts has already run. It's going to make sure that the MD5 checksum that it created that it generated for the contents of the files is unchanged, so that the files are still identical. And it's going to um, run exactly nothing and operate, uh, uh, and it's going to say operation completed successfully. All right. A, a final feature that um, I will advertise that, that to me, like, uh, really, uh, and so I'm cheating a little bit, but I, I'll take 15 seconds. Um, uh, a, a final operation that I think really um, makes Liquibase very impressive is the ability to preview, um, I mean, For the screen, yeah. So it's the ability to preview um, the changes. So if you're not sure what is going to be deployed, you can run the lb update dash sql uh, command, and it will. And I'm currently printing it to a file. Um, so and we can see in the file that if I were to run liquid, if I were to deploy Liquibase right now, it would do exactly nothing. So all the commands here are. Um, are strictly liquid commands is not proposing to do any DDL or DML. So, um, so this is, um, this is in, well, so Rich has an interesting point that I'll get to in a second. Um, but this, uh, this is a key element of liquid base, right? Is that it able to determine what it should run and what it shouldn't run. Um, now, uh, right. so Rich's, Rich's comment was that liquid base could in fact, create those changes in the SQL file rather than adding them in. Um, right. Well, I'll let you finish. And, and, and I don't think that's actually quite accurate in that um, Liquibase will do a lot with the XML files. I don't know that it will actually do this um, in the same method. Uh, and, and this is one of the areas that I think um, like power Liquibase users may say, ah, I don't love this, this approach of, of doing this in your SQL files. Um, I think this is, uh, and a more approachable for somebody that's got experience like me. Whereas if you want to use Liquibase to its fullest, you might actually want to learn um, the, the methods for doing a diff, for example, and, and that kind of thing. Do you want to comment more on that, Hayden? Precisely right. So, so what I just illustrated in five minutes is one approach and it's an approach that works for me. Um, the, uh, the alternative approach would be to work with the XML files, because as you just said, Anton, the liquid base diff command can compare the origin and destination schema and generate the necessary XML files required to bridge that gap. But that would require reviewing XML files when it comes to uh, deploying. So because right. I'm much more comfortable in SQL, I like this methodology. Right, and, and I would even say in the methodology that you demonstrated, you did line 27 of this directly in the database, but really you could have done it in this file and then done the update in your dev environment as well um, in, a, in a way to test this file, for example, to make sure it worked. Uh, that's right. I, I guess the, um, the create table portion would have caused an error, but um, th th there are ways around that. Yeah. Um, so uh, 
I think that this is a, uh, a great, like I said, introduction to, uh, to liquid base and, and um, the idea that uh, liquid base can, can help, help deal with these kinds of things that are, are inherent in you know, databases, right? We're, we're doing altered table scripts and that kind of thing. Um, and it's a little bit different than just laying down the whole thing because you also have to be careful about data that's in the database, all, all these kinds of things. So, um, uh, that's right. And actually on that point, I think um, another, t so we've discussed how to deploy data in previous episodes. So I think it might be incumbent on us to review how, what Liquibase has to say about the correct way to deploy data. Yeah, there are so many, um, so many alternatives uh, to to how to go about this, um, and I think Liquibase uh, is is something that I need uh, I need to continue to use and use more of. Um, I, I'm a fan of uh, Oracle uh, Apex supporting objects. A lot of people aren't, um, but I think there are different use cases for some of these different um, different techniques, um, and Liquibase is. Uh, is definitely a a way of the future for sure, um, right? So, uh, yeah, uh, it, it's um, SQL CL is is definitely the way of the future, and yeah, it comes sure. with local base. So, by yeah. implication, yeah, yeah, great. Well, we often uh, take a break and have a little off-topic tip or something, but we um, have yammered on about this uh, enough that I'm already hun hungry for lunch. So. Um, yes. <laughs> Unless you have something really pressing, I want to get to my sandwich. I say we let these people go. All right. You've wasted a perfectly good 12 minutes uh, listening to us. Uh, have a great weekend. Tell all your friends. Have a great weekend. <laughs>